It's not about saving time, it's saving energy. Because by day three, day four, day five, it's all about how much energy you have left. This is a video full of tips and tricks on how a family with kids can save time, energy, and their sanity on their next trip to Walt Disney World. So let's start this from the beginning. Did you know you don't have to pay for parking at Walt Disney World? You can eat at your favorite restaurant without reserving two months in advance, and you can actually watch the nightly fireworks and the parades with nobody standing right in front of you. Walt Disney World doesn't make these tips obvious, but after vacationing there over 20 times over the last eight years, I think I've finally figured out all the little things that can make or break a Disney vacation. And in this video, I'm going to show you several crucial tips that'll make your next trip to Walt Disney World worth it and completely stress-free. The first tip is how to park for free at the Walt Disney World Parks. If you're staying on property, Disney charges nightly parking fees. And if you're staying off property in an attempt to save money, they're going to charge you when you come to park inside the theme parks. There are at least two ways to avoid the parking fee. The first way, which is inconvenient and very much time consuming, is to park at Disney Springs and from there you're going to take a bus to one of the hotels that is adjacent to the theme park you're going to and when you're at that hotel you can transport to the theme park. The other way to avoid a parking fee is to book a dining reservation in the hotel next to the theme park you want to attend that day. When you pull up to a hotel, tell the attendant you have a dining reservation and they will let you park for free. And the bonus is you can leave your car there all day long. And with that dining reservation, they will not charge you a fee. It does mean you're going to have to buy breakfast, but you are probably going to eat breakfast anyway. And that's not a terrible thing because let's be honest, breakfast inside the theme parks is pretty much garbage. Unless you're sitting down at one of those ridiculously expensive character buffets, quick service breakfast options in the parks aren't great. They're pretty much filled with sugar. Your kids of course will enjoy it. But then a few hours later when you're waiting in line, they come down off the sugar high, they're cranky, hot, and it's a nightmare. So get you a solid breakfast and use this tip as a way to get free parking or at least consider it a discount on your breakfast meal. And another tip, one of the cheapest sit down breakfast options is actually at the Grand Floridian. Coincidentally called the Grand Floridian Cafe, they always have availability. It is more expensive, of course, than a quick service restaurant. But once you're there and have had breakfast, you have three options to get to the Magic Kingdom Park walk, monorail, or by boat. And I just briefly mentioned character meals. Here's another quick tip. When your kids are meeting some of the characters, have one parent take pictures or video with their phone while another parent gives the kids a phone of their own so they can take selfies. I guarantee the pictures they'll take will be some of the most enjoyable pictures you'll take in the whole trip. Another small pro tip, Goofy takes the best selfies. Next up is how to watch the fireworks with nobody in front of you. And this is important because no matter what day of the year it is, finding a spot for the fireworks can be incredibly painful. The worst example is one, you don't find a great spot, or two, you find one only to have somebody who's much taller than you get right in front of you right as the fireworks show is about to start. So in this tip, we'll cover two ways to watch the fireworks with nobody in front of you. This was my family's most recent view for the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party Fireworks. It's hard to make out in the video because it's dark, but if you look closely, you can see nobody is standing anywhere close in front of us. And if you want this stress-free view where every member of your family can watch the fireworks with nobody in front of you, buy the dessert party. If you're not familiar with the dessert parties, every time there is an evening show, they offer this party. It is a small private event located in the Tomorrowland Terrace with unlimited treats, unlimited alcohol, and your own private viewing of the fireworks. There are two options for the viewing party, and this is one of those weird times where the most expensive option is not the one you want. They have the Garden Terrace, which is the cheaper option, and they have the other viewing party with the reserved seating. The problem with the reserved seating is you can see here where they have the chairs, they have an overhang as well, so some of the higher and altitude fireworks get kind of cut off from the reserved seating. We've sat there before, trust me, you want the garden viewing. Additionally, when you're in the reserved seating, you're off center to the fireworks. So your view to the light show isn't as great. And several of the fireworks are of course strategically positioned around the castle for viewing it right in front of it. So for those three reasons, it's cheaper, you get a better view, and you don't miss the higher up fireworks, the garden viewing is the better option. And I won't spend that much time talking about the provided treats, but they are quite delicious. It's an unlimited buffet, and at the end of the long day at Magic Kingdom, unlimited alcohol for the parents, well, you can decide if that's good for you or not. But from a viewing perspective, it's absolutely worth it. One other quick tip to watch the fireworks without someone in front of you is don't look at them in front of the castle. Now the problem with that is you're not going to see the castle front display and the fireworks will be off center, but you can find plenty of good viewing spots away from the castle with nobody in front of you and still catch a pretty good show. 
Before we talk about the best views for the parade and how to get them without waiting in a spot for hours, let's talk about the bird show over at Animal Kingdom and where the best seating for that show is. If you look at their seating, they have a pretty standard layout. You have typical stage front seating and seating off to the sides. Of course, if you get there early enough and want to sit in the front or second row, that's probably going to be your best spot. However, if you get there late and those seats are taken up, there are some better options for seating that might not be intuitive. You're going to want to take into account where the birds in the show are going to fly when you choose your seating. For example, behind the offset seating on each side is a perch, and they will send birds off to fly during the show several times to these perches. And you'll see they fly off to the back left perch, they then fly over the audience to the back right perch, and from there they go back to the central stage. So if you want to get a really close up look at the birds, especially as they fly over, you might want to consider sitting somewhere in this flight path. Also, one particular bonus is there is almost always an audience participation moment. And that participation moment is right here. So if you want to get a good look at the birds and also a chance to interact in the show, this is your best spot. Now let's talk about how to get unobstructed views for the parade. The problem with getting great views with the parade are the same as with the fireworks. People will start camping out and reserving spots for themselves and their family members hours before they even start. So I understand the strategy, but those are hours that you would much rather be doing something fun in the park than just sitting around waiting for something to happen. The good news about the parade though, it is slightly easier and you don't have to pay for a dessert party like you did for the fireworks. The way to watch the parade without having anybody in front of you is to forget watching it in front of the castle or on Main Street. The parade actually starts all the way beside Splash Mountain. And and especially for the Festival of Fantasy Parade that is every day at three, you can pretty much show up around Splash Mountain at quarter to three and be guaranteed a spot right on the street as the parade goes by. And of course, you can also do the same tactic for the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party because everybody wants to get a good view of the Headless Horseman as they go by. The other benefit for watching the parade near Splash Mountain or Adventureland is the parade can take anywhere from 15 to 20, 30 minutes just to get to Main Street. So really by the time the parade gets started toward the end of Main Street, it's finishing up for everybody who is watching it at Splash Mountain. And that's an additional 30 minutes you get to go back into the park and do whatever you want to while everybody else is still watching the parade. Trust me, watching the parades near Splash Mountain will save you time before the parade and after the parade and you will still get great views. And speaking of saving time, for the next tip, let's talk about Genie Plus. Boy, do people hate Genie Plus but you have to have it. There are two main reasons people hate it. It's incredibly unintuitive and it replaces a service that was intuitive and free, but those days are gone, so forget about them. The Disney Genie app is generally garbage and useless, but you have to have it to get the Genie Plus and the Lightning Lanes. Genie Plus will make or break your Disney vacation. It can be really easy and I get it to try and save money and not purchase Genie Plus, but to tell you why it's a bad idea and to prove the point, let's look at why this app is still useful in what is generally deemed the least necessary park for the app to purchase, and that's Epcot. Today is Saturday the 7th at 6.30 in the evening, a non-holiday weekend, and you can see the wait times for four fairly popular rides at Epcot already puts you at waiting in line for over four hours. This doesn't include any potential wait time for Guardians of the Galaxy, nor does it include the near 30 minute walk time between some of these rides. Also, it doesn't include the time sitting down that you spend eating. Let's just say you do two sit down meals during the day, each of those being approximately 45 minutes to an hour. Today, the park is open from 10 in the morning to nine in the evening. And you can see you spent roughly half the time the park is open eating, waiting in line, or walking between rides in the park. And let's just say you're a glass half full kind of person and say, well, that leaves another five or six hours of enjoying the park. That may be true, but if you spend all that time at the park, walking, waiting in line, in the hot sun, plus doing everything else that Epcot has to offer, by the end of the day, you're exhausted. You get back, you crash hard, you sleep in late the next day, you're killing the coffee machine in the hotel before you take off, you do it again the next day, you do it again the next day. By day three, your kids have nothing left. They're exhausted, you're exhausted, and the trip has gone from being incredibly fun to a struggle just to get through the day, and by the end of the vacation, everybody's miserable, they had a decent time, but they're ready to go home to actually have another vacation. Even using Disney Genie Plus at Epcot, where everybody says it's not necessary, will save you at least four hours of waiting time. That's not waiting with cranky kids. That's not waiting in the hot sun, even in the least popular rides. Let's take a look at Spaceship Earth. This is the end of the day, and we're still using Genie Plus, walking right past the line. Look at these three people here. I've never met them. They're probably the most friendly people on earth, but they are miserable. This is a 20 minute wait and you can tell by their faces they are done. So here we are bypassing people at Avatar, bypassing people at Splash Mountain, bypassing people at Remy's Ratatouille, bypassing people to ride the Millennium Falcon. And I guarantee you the looks on most people's faces that you see when you walk by them screams, I wish I'd paid the 20 bucks so I'm not waiting in line with my kids. It's not about saving time. 
it's saving energy because by day three, day four, day five, it's all about how much energy you have left. There are plenty of videos out there on how to do Genie Plus, how to do the lightning lane. Watch a couple of those and get an idea for it, get a feel for it. Basically, there are really only three drawbacks. And one, it costs money. Two, it is the increased stress level because it does require you to have your phone and look at it throughout the day to make updates on your reservations and make additional reservations. That ultimately is a pretty big drain on your battery. And if your phone battery runs out, it's pretty much your brains of the operation. It has all your reservations on it, all your dining plans, all your lightning lanes, so you don't wanna be without it. So another quick trip, take a battery bank. I won't harp on it too much, but this is the Anchor Battery Bank and it's a lifesaver. Not only for this trip, but you can take it to other trips. This is when we were on our way to Alaska and it powered all of our devices on the plane, it's a solid investment. The next tip we're gonna discuss is how to get your favorite restaurant reservation when you didn't book two months in advance like they tell you to. If you look at other videos and Disney blogs, they tell you to set your alarm clock two months in advance so you get that reservation. And they're not wrong. If you need a specific restaurant and on a specific day at a specific time, yes, that's what you need to do. However, all of those restaurants are going to have availability when you're down there. A day before, two days before, a week before, people start canceling reservations like crazy. Look at this example here. Topolino's Terrence Character Breakfast is one of the most popular ticket items in town. When we were driving to Disney on one of our last trips, we had no active reservations. If you look about 24 to 48 hours in advance, you'll see just about every restaurant is available at some point. Here I'm looking a day in advance and I can see Topolino's. I got the reservation and we were able to eat there the following morning for breakfast. And if you take a look right now, you can see that I'm looking a month ahead in advance and all the reservations for Topolino's are gone. So the point being is don't worry about waking up two months in advance. Just look two or three days beforehand, you're going to be able to get the reservation you want. Another random tip is if you're not super excited about wearing a magic band all day long on one wrist while having your watch on the other, if you have an Apple Watch, they made an update not too long ago where your Apple Watch will basically do what the original Magic Bands would do. So once you download the Disney Genie app, use it to get into the rides and into the parks as well, and you won't have to wear something else on your opposite wrist if that's something that bothers you. Another tip that I have when you do a vacation like this, and it kind of goes along with giving the kids your phone so they can take selfies, but to take it a step further, give them their own camera. We got my son this small creative can to take. It's five megapixels. It actually has a lens that flips up so they can take their own selfies. This is actually video that we took on our recent trip to Alaska. Shameless plug, you can check that video out if you want to. I'll link it in the description below. But cameras like these are great because you can give them to the kids. They're not asking for your phone. You don't have to worry about them dropping it. These things are built like a tank. It's a good time. So if you take away anything from this video, get a breakfast reservation at a hotel near the theme park you wanna visit. Buy the Genie Plus, it is worth it because not only will you save a bunch of time in the theme parks, you will save energy, which at the end of the day, with your kids involved, is far more important. Book the dessert party for stress-free viewing of the fireworks. And the last thing, don't worry about watching the parade in front of the castle. You will have just as good a time watching it at Splash Mountain and, and you will save time both before and after the parade. If you like this travel tip video, watch our video on Alaska, watch our video on the Polar Express. There will be more to come. Have a great day and we'll see you next week.